Traders, today's video is going to introduce you to an incredibly important feature about alerts, and that is the capability to create an alert on your watch list. So you can see my mouse moving up here off to the right. And really to get started with this, you just want to make sure you have a watch list. Now, if you don't know what a watch list is or where it is on TradingView, the first thing you want to do when you're on the chart is click the watch list details and news icon. Now, once the watch list details and news icon appears, you have the ability to create a watch list rather quickly by clicking this plus sign and then adding any symbols that you think you want to see on this specific watch list. So as you can see here, I've just added some symbols and now I've got this day trading list here. If I wanted to make a new watch list, click the drop down and I could just click create new list, give it a name and get started. But before I do that, let me now show you the really important feature here that says create alert on the list. If I click this, my alert menu opens up already with the symbols selected. Then I can go about creating a highly specific alert that is attached to each and every one of these specific symbols. That's right, one alert for every single symbol on this list. So how cool is that? If you, for example, were watching the key indexes and you wanted to place an alert that let you know, that would let you know if any of these indexes move a specific percentage, you would get alerted via phone, email, desktop, anything that you wish. You can now do that. Another way to accomplish that is just simply to click the alert icon at the top of your chart. Now, by default, if you click the alert icon at the top of your chart, the symbol you're looking at, DXY in this case, will appear. But click the drop down, and now you can see here we've got our key indexes watch list open. Let's click key indexes, and now we're creating an alert for all of these symbols. Really fantastic way to track any type of highly specific watch list you make, whether it's the indexes waiting for big moves, maybe you have a day trading list that you're just waiting for moves to occur on. Go ahead, create that custom list, and then make that alert. Now let's walk through the actual alert process. So the first thing we want to double check is symbols. We've got day trading list selected. You can see it's got a different icon here. It doesn't look like a symbol. It's a list or our watch list. We can confirm day trading list. Look at this watch list right here, day trading list. So we know we are creating a single alert for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten symbols. I could have 20 symbols on this list if I wished, and I could then set an alert for all 20. Now, as you can see here, it says price. This condition says price. And so, for example, if I wanted to make a alert based on price, well, for example, if I did crossing price, I could then type in the value. Or perhaps if I wanted to great to do greater than, I could type in the price. But of course, you want to understand these conditions because if I type in greater than one, for example, well, this means I'm creating an alert that basically is saying if the price is greater than one for any of these symbols, you know, send me that alert. Now that's obviously You know, firing off. They've they've all fired off. Quite literally, I've got alert, alert, alert. Let's exit through them. You can see here. So you also you really want to be careful about the alert. Make sure that they make complete sense and are totally logical. But at least in that example, I did get to show you how easy it is. All of these symbols are greater than one. I got an alert for every single symbol in my log menu. I can see that. So let's go back to our watch list. Let's click alert and let's expand on this further, not just with a nonsensical example, but something meaningful now. So what I want to do in this case is have day trading list. And what I'm going to do now is do moving up a percentage. So imagine I've got this highly custom list here of all the symbols I want to trade. And I want to know if any of these symbols move up a specific percentage in a certain period of time. So right now it says 1% in one bar. Why don't I make this a little bigger? Let's say, well, let's do 1% and let's give it time. Let's do, let's do one bar actually, because maybe we want to trigger now. So what we're doing now is we're creating an alert 
for every single symbol here. We're looking to trade them. We're waiting for the big move. If any of these symbols jump 1% in one bar, we want to know immediately. I mean, that's, that's action. 1%, one bar, something happened. Now we want to make sure we select our time interval. Is it five minutes, one hour, four hours, one day? You have to think about all of the symbols on one time interval waiting for this 1% move. Well, let's go ahead and let's do five minutes. So a 1% move in five minutes, that actually seems to be a bit too unlikely. I'd like to see if we can get this to trigger. So let's actually do 0.1% on this five minute chart in one bar. We, we might get some action here. Now, next up is trigger. So this is effectively what happens when the alert triggers. Do you want it to trigger once, once per bar, once per bar close, once per minute? Well, let's talk about this. Only once means once this condition is met on all of these symbols you see here, I will get the alert and I'll get it once. Once per bar could mean the alert is on for all of these symbols. In each new bar, if this condition is met, it will just keep letting me know this new bar happened, this new bar happened. Once per bar close, it's waiting for the bar to close. And you know, the end of the bar, this 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 candle here that you see, the, the end of it. Let's actually even switch to a five minute chart so that it aligns with our interval. Once per minute, just like what it sounds like, the uh, the trigger is happening once per minute. But let's do only once. I think a lot of people out there use only once because you're waiting for that move. And when that move happens, you want the alert. You then click it to the chart and you analyze it. Next up is your expiration. Well, your expiration is a very effective tool because some traders have time frames and time limits on their trades. Now, maybe you want an open-ended alert, meaning just it never expires, depending on your trading view plan, is if you have access to this or not. Please keep in mind the number of alerts you have as well is also dependent on your trading view plan. We've made videos about this, technical alerts, price alerts, two totally different numbers of alerts that come with your plan. But the point here is maybe you're just looking for a trade this week. It's Friday. So let's actually go into next week. So let's go to next Friday. One week of trading. If any of these conditions are hit over the next week, we want to know. If not, we're moving on to the next list of stocks or crypto or Forex, anything. The choice is yours. So here's our expiration. Now we can give this alert a custom name. This is really helpful because you might want to organize your alerts nicely. And as you saw earlier in our alerts menu here where the log is and where you can edit your alerts, giving it a name will make it easier to follow. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to call this the percent move alert um, example. So pretty standard name here. It's this video I'm recording. It's all an example, percent move. Then the message here essentially is going to place the ticker. So these brackets are actually, think of it as a line of code. It's going to inject whatever ticker satisfies these triggers on your watch list into this placeholder that says ticker. Five, because that's our time interval, five, up 0.1% in one bar. Pretty cool. Now, before I click create, I do want to talk about notifications because right now I have a whale sound playing for these alerts. You know, I think you may have heard. The whole point though is that, you know, this is up to you. I think for this alert, why don't we do something more classic? So let's actually go to classic and let's do the three notes reverb. Let's do once, but we can have it play on specific time intervals as well. But let's just hear it one time. Also, we're going to get a notification in our app the toast notification, which you saw, an email delivered to us. If we wanted to send this to a chat or a group or a website or an app, we could do that with our webhook URL. Now, imagine you have a, you know, a perfect list here of specific symbols, and then you have alerts built on these symbols, and then you have an app or a website or a chat. You could create this alert process to fire off right into that area of the web or your community that you want it to, all based off of the highly custom list you start. Now I'm gonna un uncheck that, I'm not doing that for now, but now you understand the basics of this process. So I'm gonna click create and let's see what happens. If anything moves, you know, 0.1% or so, we're gonna wait around a second to see. You recall these, some of these symbols are, you know, slow moving. They might not really move as fast as we wish. So we may not see the alert right away, but we can check on it because if we click alerts here, let's go to alerts. Here it is. We just made this alert. Hover our mouse. We see the details. We even see the name we made percent move alert 
example. So we can just essentially wait for this event to happen. And in addition, what's rather important is we can also edit this alert for our entire watch list just by clicking the edit button. There it is. Also keep in mind that if you go to your watch list, once you've created an alert, always check to make sure that you have this clock showing because this ETC, what's going on? Let's see the move. Check out that candle. It just triggered. We can see it right here. Wow. Look at that candle. Now we're on it. Message delivered. We made this, all of these symbols, BTC USD, the first one to move like this. Fan fantastic stuff here. And as I was saying, we can see the alerts are on just by seeing this specific icon. Now do keep in mind that just because this alert triggered for Bitcoin, it can still trigger for all of the other symbols on this list. I wish I had done down because look at these down moves, Nvidia and Apple. These alerts can trigger for every single symbol on this list still. The Bitcoin alert seems to have been satisfied but these are still active. So this is an important thing to keep in mind. This is not a, um, you know, an alert that if it's triggered once, it stops for all symbols. It's still active for all of the remaining symbols that you see. Now I wanna go a step further here because you want to make sure you understand this at the most important level. Now the alerts I've made have been about price. But it's quite important at this point in time to talk about the fact that you can make alerts on more than just price for these symbols. So if I go to indicators and go to technicals, well, I can create alerts for essentially all of these technicals as well for all of these symbols. For all of you in the PineScript community, imagine making a PineScript alert for every single symbol in your watch list. Meaning if there was a specific pine script that you loved, you could create an alert for these symbols based on it just by adding it to your chart. But before I do that, let me go to technicals and just stick to a simple example to really get the point across. We've got moving average, simple. So as you can see here, I've added moving average, simple. Let's change this and let's just make the length three because let's see if we can get a trigger to occur. So here's our three moving average on a five minute chart. Now watch what I do here. I'm gonna click create alert. Well, let me make this moving average even more visible so you can really get a feel for what's happening here and what's moving. So we've got this white moving average here. We got another move, AT&T. We can click into AT&T and see what happened. Wow, there it goes. Fascinating stuff. This is what you can do with your alerts. But it gets even better because I've got this really tight, simple moving average. You know, there's not much to this. We're on a five minute chart. You know, we're just looking at the average price the last 15 minutes, essentially. Let's write, let's uh, uh, actually go up here, create alert on list, day trading list. It says price, click drop down. Simple moving average. Wow, they're really firing off. Something's moving. We, we saw all that red, and now there seems to be some action. Silver is now up 0.1% in one bar. Okay, let's go now to this, this, this alert we're creating with this simple moving average. Want to make sure I show this again. Condition price. Click the drop down, click SMA. So what you're seeing now that's really, really important is you're creating an alert now based off of the simple moving average. So condition is now not price. I want to make an alert for all of these symbols, when it crosses above this simple moving average, I want I want to know about it. So let's do crossing. Let's do. Let's just do greater than any any symbol that's greater than this. Then any any symbol on our watch list that's greater than this simple moving average, give us an alert. Now it's important here that you might have value shown. Well, that's interesting because it's value, so it's the price of the symbol. You're going to want to make sure you have the your value set as the SMA because this after all is a simple moving average alert. But keep in mind, you can make additional customizations, a Bollinger band of that alert, upper or lower, but let's keep this simple moving average based moving average. So now our interval, our alerts are just firing off here. Let's keep it, you know, on the five minute interval. If we were a long-term, you know, trader investor, we could do one day. We could also even go to hours, minutes, seconds, uh, even even days here, weeks and months, the choice is ours. Let's go to five minutes. I'm not gonna spend the time to customize this all again. Wow, things are moving. 
uh, open-ended. Let's just just indicator alert example. So now you can see here, moving average greater than, okay, so let's actually change this to value. There we go. Okay, so now we've got this. So actually you do wanna make sure that this is set to value. The SMA option is you creating a, an, an alert based off of an indicator based off of an indicator, which is actually pretty, pretty cool. It's a derivative of an indicator. So it would be SMA is greater than this simple base moving average of a moving average. But we have, we have SMA is greater than the value. So the value of the ticker. So let's go ahead and click create across all of those symbols. And wow, we just got a bunch that fired off right away. But that makes perfect sense because that means essentially a majority of the symbols are are above their specific indicator that we've just created the alert with. So if we go to log now, we can read through all of them. There we go. They're all greater. So this is, you know, go have fun with this. This is extremely powerful. And ideally, you just see the capabilities of these alerts to stay in the know quickly about a vast list of symbols that you care about, whether it's Forex, equities, crypto, futures, anything that comes to mind, create the watch list, then create the alerts. And hopefully this video is going to give you the baseline for getting started and going to teach you really how to, you know, use this, get started with it and create some smart, sophisticated alerts. So thanks so much for watching. As always, be subscribed for more. We're always creating these educational videos and be sure to check out our help center and leave comments and questions and we'll answer them the best we can. Thanks for watching.